Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cosy little corner of the internet. I'm Pen and today I'll be reading chapter 6 of Waffles, a Shinsai Goku and Sokoku fanfiction. Uh, this is chapter 6, Results and Tears. I hope you guys enjoy. It's going to be a long one today. Chapter 6, Result and Tears. It was light. The only light source was from street lamps and lighting inside buildings. One in front of a boy as he made his way into the tall building in front of him. His hair half white, half light purple, and it, and down to his hips, eyes that shined silver. Welcome, Sigma. Are you here to see Ivan? A staff member spoke with a light-hearted smile. Yes, is he making progress? Sigma asked, looking up to the lady, who in response gave him a frown. Maybe, the woman quietly responded. Anyway, I'm sure you know where his room is. I'm sure you remember. You know where his room is, I'm sure you remember. I do. Sigma gave a forced smile in return. As he made his way up to the room, he wore a button-up jacket with exaggerated sleeves and some grey plaid pants. His fashion gained looks from every day from those in the hall. Finally, he reached the door, room th 203. He smiled lightly before opening the door. Hello, brother, Sigma said, giving a small wave. On the floor laid Ivan, his hair long and curly, making its way across the floor like a snake, a bandage wrapped tightly around his head. He smiled widely at the sight of Sigma. Why, hello. He got up from where he, was, where he laid without hesitance. Did you bring me something to read? Of course. Today I pricked up the precedence. Ooh. Ivan rested his elbows on the floor, resting his chin on his wrists in interest. Sigma smiled lightly. How have you been? Scared? Ivan was quick to respond. Why so? Sigma sat down on the chair next to the bed. It wasn't news. One day, one day it was Ivan saying that there were people after him. The others, it would be about bombs planted inside him. The food is bad. Hmm? Did they serve mashed potatoes again? Yes. Sigma gave a light laugh. Some days were better, some worse. Today seemed like a good one. Where's Shibu? Shibu's hour? Sigma's expression... Sigma's laugh faded and his voice... And his happy expression became bitter. Shibu's hour hasn't visited you in years. Why not? Ivan smiled as if it was a joke. Work? He gets really busy, I guess. Sigma wouldn't dare to mention the dirty parts of him, for Ivan's sake, for not worrying about his younger brother. Heck, he hadn't even seen Shiba's hour in years. Hmm. Ivan laid on the floor again, this time making direct eye contact with the light on, on the ceiling. I'm so later than I am uh, than I usually am. I'm going to be visiting Ugai Academy tomorrow. We have a big test. For 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 the decay of angels? Sigma laughed. For the decay of angles? Sigma laughed. Angles? Sigma asked. Or whatever it's called. You shouldn't be in it anymore. Why not? Spend more time with me. I'm lonely. I want to play Uno. The two talked for what seemed like forever until Sigma had to leave. And when he got home, it was, it was study time. Okay, maybe studying didn't sound amazing, but to Sigma it was to Sigma it was work. He was never he, he was never hesitant hesitant to do it though. He sat in the kitchen, on at the kitchen table. It was huge. The family's the house itself was huge. His family owned a jewel company and sold all over all over Japan. For around an hour, it was silent. It was silent studying in the darkness with a lamp to light up his paper. Creak. It was silent. The sound of small footsteps made its way. Sigma froze. He was on the verge of getting up and to grab a kitchen knife for defence, but he decides not to move. Sometimes his father came home late, drunk most of the time, but this was quieter. The light switched on. Oh, Shubazawa.
Sheep is our. Sigma muttered dumbfounded. Sigma! The man yelled with an overly excited expression. He dropped his bag to the floor, running over to the other. His long silver hair that swayed, blood red eyes, and beautiful long painted nails in dead black. It was certainly Shuba's hour. What are you doing here? Sigma didn't sound excited nor angry. He was just. He was completely confused. Me? I'm here to visit. Don't lie, you haven't spoken to me in three years. That's the truth. I'm here to I'm here because I want to support you in the upcoming test. You're gonna have you're gonna have against the students of the Guy Academy. She was our said energetically. Support me. Sigma's voice came down more grounded. Became more grounded. It was suddenly angry. He pushed his pencil onto the table onto the paper harshly until it snapped. He, he let it he let go of it. Shiba Sawa watched as it rolled off the table, making a subtle noise as it hit the hard floor. How has Ivan been? Shiba Sawa asked, trying to change the subject. Since when did you support me? Sigma's voice was quiet in a hurt qu- asked quietly in a hurt voice. Shiba Sawa went silent in shock. Why are you here? I wanted to cheer you on. I know it must be hard studying. What? So you t- what? So you're telling me you ditched me for three years and came back telling me this crap? Sigma got up. I don't get it. I thought you'd be happy to see me, younger brother. What the hell do you mean? Do you seriously not get it? Sigma snapped, this time his voice rising. I don't. When Ivan got into that car crash years back... What about it? I was suffering. He was suffering. For names, for months he couldn't even say his own name. But he's alright now, right? No, he'll n- never recover. I can't believe it. Sigma gripped through his teeth. How's America been? Running your own jewellery shop? Getting women to spread their legs for you? Shiba Sawa seemed hurt and dumbfounded. I was worried about you a lot. Then why didn't you come visit me? You know what? I bet you've been happy. You get to inherit the company now that the oldest brother is permanently out the picture. Sigma spat. I'm no, I'm not. He was cut off when Sigma grasped his collar, pulling him close for direct eye contact. Whatever you're trying to pull, whatever you're trying to pull, don't even try it. Get the fuck out of here. Sigma's words pierced. His ex. His glare ten- intense, not blinking once. A boy who was usually studying, quiet, and never one to be this feral. Shibazawa was released for a moment. I... Before Shibazawa could continue, smack. A, sm- a sharp pain made its way through Shibazawa's jaw. It stung. I said, get out. Sigma repeated. Shibazawa at, th- at the moment bit his tongue. He turned around and left without another word, taking his suitcase with him. Sigma stood there for a long moment, silent, realizing what he had just said, what he had meant, what to, what he had meant, what to do. He grabbed his phone, quickly running upstairs into his room, slamming the door shut. For the first time in forever, cheers. Tears made their way down his cheeks. His vision was fuzzy, and from tears, he looked down through. He looked through his contacts and just, and just wanted to talk to anyone called Fyodor. It went silent for a moment. Hello, it's twelve p.m. Twelve a.m. Twelve p.m. You should be studying. Fyodor said over the phone, with a small yawn. Sigma stiffened and went. To which Fyodor went silent. I'm sorry, my brother visited. Sheba's hour? Yes. What an idiot he is. Fyodor said with a sigh. He heard he heard the sniffling continue. Listen, I'm not really good with crying children, but I'll say the phone on the phone with you as long as you need. And that's when the crying began for real. It was so loud that Fyodor had to turn the vo- turn his volume down. Sigma didn't talk. Feudal didn't talk. 
but it was comforting to know someone was there, even if they didn't know how to comfort you. This time, a different kind of hospital light shined. You can visit Tree Nakahara now, a v- v- nurse said in a robotic-like tone. The three who were desperately waiting nodded and went to and went to the room, eager to see Tria, who was sitting on the bed. His head rested on his knees. Why, are you okay? What happened? Dazai asked quickly. Uh, it's nothing too much. The doctor said I fainted due to stress. Tria said, his voice slightly muffled by the blanket he dug his face into. Atsushi let out a relieved sigh. Dazai sat on the chair, resting his cheek on his palm, with the palm of his ha- his cheek in the palm of his hand, seemingly deep in thought. When will you be discharged? Atsushi asked. In a couple of hours. They just need to make sure my head is okay from falling onto the floor. Tria said, his expression guilty. You can head home. I'll take care of Tria. Does I said, cracking a small smile at the others. Are you sure? Will be? Will you be staying here all night? Atsu she asked. Can, cause I can stay here too. Now, Daz, I was practically pushing Atsushi and Ranosuke out of the room. It's okay, True and I get along great. Remember, we're busy tomorrow, so just go get some rest. Daz, I kept talking until he forced them out of the room, shutting the door on them. He sighed and suddenly his expression became more worried. What's going on? Daz, I asked, sitting beside Truya. The redhead was silent, his expression seemingly more scared. It's a test, isn't it? The brunette said, sounding more sympathetic than you would expect you would expect most people like him to be. Elise, the redhead said, suddenly started. She's having a piano recital soon. It was gradual, but a, fu- but a hug formed between the two. I'm sorry, I'll go with you I'll go with you like I usually do. Chia gripped tightly to Dazai's shirt as if he with as if it was all he had. Maybe it was. Probably it was. Good morning Dazai said with excitement. The three lounged on the couches, bags under their eyes, and barely staying awake. How can you be so energized? Atsushi muttered. I'm used to bullying all nighters. Now don't mind me. Now don't mind me. Now let's go greet the cave angels. They're arriving soon. Why must we go and meet them? Ranosuke asked flatly, coughing into his handkerchief. They're the top three. It's expected of us. Does I said, grabbing everyone by their shirts and dragging them out the door. So tired, Atsushi muttered, rubbing his vision, trying to clip rubbing his eyes and trying to clear his vision. They were pulled into the same theatre as yesterday and even sat in the same chairs. Whispers echoed around the room, quiet footsteps and dip, and the dip and the lights becoming dip, just like yesterday. A head peeked out of the curtains, someone with long hair, half being light purple, the other half being light grey, with a cookie stuffed in his mouth. He blinked. A pair of hands came out out of came out and re- reeled him back into the curtains. Um, who was that? Atsushi whispered, looking over to Chuya, who was next to him. His hand shaking, his face, and his face, he looked terrified. Are you okay? Atsushi asked, his hand reaching out. Chuya noticed his voice and was and it was like a switch. He stopped shaking. His eyes went ter- went from terrified to empty. It was like a robot. I'm fine. He responded in a monotone voice. The lights became dim. One light shine- shining brightly onto the stage. You could see the dust flying by the gazing heat on the stage too. Someone stepped out, their hair dark brown and down to their chin were purple eyes that seemed concerned concentrated that seemed concentrated with a Russian a Russian sparks in him. Two others followed behind him who seemed more sunshine like. The first one looked like any time were 
looked like the time to rain check look like the type to rain check anytime you wanted to hang out while the other two looked like they would be the ones to ask to hang out if that makes sense one of them was the one peeking behind from through the curtain earlier the other was the other one the other was the one with a long braid holding his beautiful white hair noticeably a tall figure as well with an eye patch that looked like th- that had three diamond like shapes painted on it all three wore their school uniform which were black suits with gold buttons and a striped red tie with a small badge on the side of it that was golden the rain check guys stopped in the middle of- stopped at the mic tapping it a few times before he started speaking hello i'm sure more told you about us but we'll be here to- testing in the hopes you meet up your school standards this is no chit chat introduction so i'll get this stuff out of the way fast and you're better off studying only to get th- thrown under the bus during our tests i'm Fyodor dostoevsky the band said he pointed over to one of the long braids this is nikolai gogol gogol nikolai gave a big smile waving before Fyodor, point- Fyodor pointed over to the one with pur- half purple half grey hair and that is Sigma, he ended, his voice like an empty spiral. Aw, Fyodor Chan, don't be such a letdown, Nikolai said, edging closer to Fyodor, his face turned into disgust, a disgusted one with a tint of pink to it. There was a slight amount of laughter that surrounded the large room. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, well, I'll, we'll be leaving now, Fyodor choked out shutting his eyes in disappointment he gave nikolai a glare before they blo- abruptly left sigma following behind them with a please save me from these two expression the lights turned back on so those are the top three sadly yes rhinosuke said getting up from his seat as did the others do we have school today Atsushi she asked no they're they expect us to prepare for our tests, which are going to be on Sunday, Saturday, Daza replied. And it's Thursday? Yup, but I mean seriously, who expects us to actually study? Want to head down to the arcade? Daza asked, nudging to his shoulder, who seemed to snap out of his days has- suddenly. But Elise has a thing at 3pm. I can't miss it, Chuya said. Come on, we'll have plenty of time. Let's visit... visit- Taito Station in Tokyo. Lower some of our stress, does I said with a smirk. Fine, but only for a little bit, Chuya said with a small smile forming on his lips. You two coming as well? Does I looked over to the two. Okay, after she said, not really wanting to go. He'd been trying to hide it, but maybe he wasn't so good at it. He, maybe he wasn't so good at it. But he was still deep down, deep inside, hurt by being completely rejected about holding hands. It was such a small thing, sure, that's what he told himself. But it made him feel so confused getting so bent over just holding hands. What about you, Oktagawa? Does I asked, tilting his head to the side. No. Rinosuke answered abruptly, coughing a bit. Why not? I have plans. You're going. I am not. Yes, you are. I said no. Please. No. I'll buy you snacks. No. But no. Please? After she asked before Dazai could continue begging. Fine, I'll go. Rinosuke said, looking down and and continuing reading. I see how it is, does I said, folding his arms together like a child. Which arcade are we going to? The one in Tokyo. That one. It only has crane. It only has crane games. Well, I've been wanting to check it out for the longest time. You better have a lot of money, does I said with a smirk. Crane games are such a rip off, Chia said, shaking his head. Too bad. The brunette stuck out his tongue in a teasing manner. Are we going now? Atsu she asked, peering over at Daza and Chuya. Yeah.
Are we going right now? That's what she asked, peering over Dar's eye and Trio. Yeah, what day is, uh, what day is Elise's re- piano recital? Dar's eye asked softly, glaring at tri- glancing at Trio. Friday, Trio repeated, replied, looking off. Well, looks like we'll be going right now. Well, I need to grab my wallet. Well, we'll just stop quickly by the dorms. We'll, we'll, well, we'll stop by the dorms. Just be quick. Darzai said, Should we invite Higuchi and Akutagawa's sister? Atsushi asked. No, they're on a date of their own. They even skipped the morning, the, the meeting this morning. Darzai said, waving it off and giving a small laugh. All four, after heading to the dorms first, headed towards the arcade, which was quite literally just filled with crane games. All right, everyone can steal Chiyu's money to play all the crane games. Darzai said, only to get smacked in in the head. No way, I'm not just some rich kid that gives money away like that. Chiyu spat, laughing a bit. It was the first time he'd laughed in seemingly quite a while. They put money inside the slots of the machines and received the arcade's currency in response, which were golden-like to- coins with Taito Station imprinted on them. Kimi and I are going this way. You two go that way. Does I said with an innocent smile, with a cute innocent hamster face, even though it, it was anything but that in reality. Before anyone can say anything, Chuya and Dazai were gone. Ah, well, do you want to try out some crane games? Atsushi looked over to Radosuke, who was looking around the place, coughing into his black handkerchief. He used so often. He used often. Sure, Radosuke answered. Atsushi smiled, walking ahead. Looking around, there were a lot of cute stuffed animal ones, but there were also anime ones. Why are there so many REM-themed arcade games? Atsushi questioned. Heck, there was even a Rem X Taito station figure. Atsushi looked over to see Radosuke just following him. Do you have any that you want? Atsushi asked with a smile. This one, Radosuke said almost too quietly, pointing at a crane game with mini tiger plushes. All with white and black, white fur and black stripes on their back. Do you like tigers? Atsushi asked, glancing over to the stuffed animals. As he pulled out a mini coin, a mini, mini co- as he pulled out a mini coin bag, Ronasuke nodded in response. Atsushi smiled as he pulled, as he put a couple of coins into the machine. Okay, I'm pretty okay at crane games. Kyoki used to take me all the time to arcades just so I could win a bunch of. A bunny pr- stuffed bunny animals. One time we got kicked out of the arcade because I kept winning. Atsushi uh, so she said with a laugh. Brianaska had a thin smile on his face for a moment. The countdown The countdown began in the crack on the crane game and after she put his concentration into the game. Looking closely at the stuffed animals as he moved closer to it, as it as he moved closer to the hole closer closer and yes that's she cheered picking up picking up picking it up from the slot and proudly giving it to Ranosuke. thanks Ranosuke said quietly looking at the cu- at looking at the cute tiger plushie before hugging it no problem that's she said smiling at his success they kept walking until s- s- they kept walking until stopping at one crane game. It was a, it was one, it was a little squid one where it could be turned inside out. To, if you turned it inside out, would change emotions. Atsushi's eyes sparkled by looking at them. Back at home, I used to collect these. Atsushi said, putting a coin inside the machine. Meanwhile, Ranasuke was next to him, looking at the tiger plushie and pressing its paws, which were coated in a more squishy, soft and squishy-like material. Atsushi won the squid first try. He was a little proud of himself. Just a little. 
Would you like to try? Would you like to try any? Atsu she asked, looking over to Ranosuke, in which Ranosuke ended up trying to play, playing to try and get the push pin, pushed in, and failing miserably. To which he looked miserable. It's okay. You don't have to get on your first try. Why don't you try again? Atsu she said quickly trying to get the other to regain confidence he bit his tongue and tried again and failed third time's the charm Atsu she cheered failed again it's so close just one more nudge another fail making progress no I just suck at it Ranasuke said rather dramatically which was a new side of him Atsu she got to see if you keep practicing you'll get better at it Atsushi said with a small smile. How long did it take you to get so good? Um, now that Atsushi thought about it, he never failed a cracking game in his entire nine lives. Well, life. He's not a cat. I'd try, but if I won, he'd... I'd try, but if I won, he'd be even more down, Atsushi thought. Wanna go try some other games? Atsushi asked, to which Radosuke agreed. Even when he lost his cool, even, even when he lost his cool, they found another one, which was a San Reno, yeah, which was a San Reno one, in which Ku- Kurumi stuck out to Atsushi the most. Atsushi, who was into Hello Kitty when he was younger, could see a resemblance between Ranasuke and Kurumi. They both. They seem mean and angry on the outside, but are relatively soft. Uh, but in reality, are softer than led to believe. I'm gonna get it, Atsushi said with determination, and failed. Looks like I've lost my luck, Atsushi said solemnly. You just lost one time. I've never lost before. Ronosuke looked at him as if he lost his mind. Let Let me try, Ronosuke said, putting one. He- putting in one of his own coins, and he won it. Whoa, looks like you saw my luck. Ranasuke held up the Kurumi plush, claiming his victory with a stone-cold face. You're the next generation of pros, Atsushi said with a sigh. Ranasuke handed him the plush so he could cough, cough into his handkerchief. I'm so hungry. What do you, what do you want to... What to want to go and get something to eat after she said his stomach his stomach seems to growl right on time too sure there's a good place nearby i'll text tree and darzai and tell them that we'll be there after she said pulling out his phone for a moment while they exit while they walk to the exit they they have checkers chasuke after she said trolling over the mere sight of the menu to which Ranosuke looked at him strangely and only to sigh. It's just tea on rice. You don't understand. It's so simplistic and sweet. That if they have curry competitions in England, why don't we have chazuke competitions in Japan? As she said playfully, yet quite seriously. I didn't know England was known for curry competitions, Ranosuke said questionably, peering over to Atsushi who was laughing. I attended one once. The curry was great and all that and all, but even when professionals cooked it, the curry was not even close to as good as Chazuke. Atsushi she insisted. You've visited England before? I have. It was a beautiful place. I wish the Crystal Palace was still was still around though. It's sad that it burnt down. I was looking forward to visiting it before my father told me I was no longer there, to which I was surprised it hadn't been around. I was surprised it hadn't been around for decades. As she said, laughing over his own words with that cute smile of his. You should take me to England one day. I should. The food isn't as bland and gross as they lead you to believe. As she said, covering his men- large menu. Covering his large smile by the menu. 
What are you going to have? Atsushi asked, peering over his menu once again to look at the other. I want to try the strawberry shortcake, Ranasuke said, pulling out his handkerchief to cough into it. Oh, they even have strawberry parfait. Are you both ready to take your order? The waitress asks. Are we? Atsushi looked over to the boy to which they, he nodded. Looked over to the other to which they nodded. The boy looked up at the waitress only to freeze in shock. M- Mitsuki? Mitsuki? Mizuki? Atsushi exclaimed to which the waitress brought a bright greenish blue to which bright Atsushi explained to which the waitress with a bright greenish blue hair pulled up in a bun immediately covered his mouth. Shh, she asked him with a worried look on her face as she cautiously looked around her. My school forbids me from working here, so be quiet, Misuki said before letting go. Oh, uh, right, sorry. Atsushi mumbled, muttered with a guilt-ridden face. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's been so long. Is this your friend here? Mits- Misuki leaned over to to her side, looking over to Ranasuke, who some would say, looking over at Ranasuke, some would say eyeing him down with suspicion. This is Akdagawa. He's a good friend of mine. I met him when I transferred to Yugai Academy. That's as she said with a smile. Friend. Ranasuke thought about thought for a moment. My, my. I could tell by your school uniforms. You look so fancy, Atsushi. Mitsuki, Mitsuki, Misuki giggled, taking out her notepad. So, what would you two like? Oh, I'll have the Chazuke. Same as ever. And you? Mis- Misuki looked over to Ranasuke with a slightly cold gaze inward. In return, Ranosuke did not as much as flinch when his eyes met hers, dull and somewhat tense. I'll have the strawberry shortcake. Is all right, is that all? Yup. That's what she said with a gleeful smile as Misuki walked off. Who was she? Oh, just a, ch- a childhood friend. That's what she said, resting his chin on his hands and his elbows on the table. Ranosuke looked at him for a moment before quickly inverting his gaze to something else which ended up being some bland art hung up on the w- hung up on the wall the meal itself was great but once Ms. Misky had shown up it became awkward for some reason meanwhile the other two stood in front of a large theatre where children ranging from 10 to 15 walked in with suits and dresses on. It'll be okay. I'll stay by your side, the brunette said sympathetically as he patted the redhead's back. It wasn't a... It wasn't a... It wasn't the recital it's himself, itself. It was a dinner Chia was forced to attend to every recital. Planned before victory to celebrate... Elisa's beforehand victory. The two walked up, walked into the audience, taking their seats on red fabric seats. Chia looked down at the shiny plate imprinted on the back of the seat behind him, a plate that always held the names of those who helped create the theatre. Agatha Christie, same as always. When Chia took theatre classes, he always sat on the one sat in this seat, the one with the nameplate of someone his dad used to work with. He had only met her once, and the vibes given were so off-putting that he felt like he could vomit. Right now, he feels the same, but only it wasn't because of Christy. Suddenly, the redhead felt a warm, a warm soft grasp envelop him. You're shaking, Chua whispered into the dark... Dazai whispered into Chuya's ear. It tickled. I'm sorry. Why? You should be studying. I pulled you away to do this. You're more important than anything in my life, Chuya. The, ma- the short male's face heats up 
had the sudden name call and words. He doesn't deserve Darzai's world. He should be. He was nothing but a sobbing boy who needed a shoulder to cry on. Darzai, this overwhelming took feeling took over Tria's heart once more, and once again it was warm but uneasy. Darzai, I, I love. Lastly, we have Elise Mori, who was twelve, playing Claire de Luon. De, de Cleon. I don't know how to pronounce it. Some sort of French shit. The man on the stage said, welcoming a girl with long curly blonde hair and empty doll-like blue eyes. She sat down on the duet bench after adjusting her, adjusting it to her height. She looked up at the stage light above her. She did not shake, she did not smile, nor did she look sad. She was simply an, an empty soul. Her hands hovered over the piano as she sat playing. It's a flawless doll, some woman in the back whispered. She came out of nowhere when she was eight, another whispered. Her father put her in a new dress. Everything's on point, but there's no emotion. They're all wrong. They were all so wrong. The piano overflowed with emotion, but it was so constricted by the fangs that trapped so, of a trapped soul that never reached anyone, but if the tip of a but if the tip of emotion did, it would leave someone in tears or maybe even scared. Scared about what the little girl had to endure and lived through, terrified as as is terrifying as is, mostly most are simply ignoring it. Maybe they're too scared to listen to the slamming of the keys or the uneasy tap of the high, of a high note. When the crowd, when the piano stopped, the crowd cheered as usual. Elise got up, looking, uh, t- and took her bow before walking off stage. And after that, the whispers ensured. When's the family dinner? Darzai asked, looking over to Tria, whose face was dug into the, his sleeves. In about thirty minutes. Well, we should be, we should get going. Will your dad drive us there? Chia nodded as he, they got up and, and walked to the lobby. And there was Elise next to her father, Ugo Mori, both seeming to talk about her performance. Chia just stood there, shocked at the sight of someone he really didn't expect to see. Paul? Extra. Rompo, how did he get stuck in there? Poe exclaimed, pressing his face against the glass to of the crane game this magician this magician guys it was great Rompo responded eating candy from the prize though it's a little cramped in here Rompo squished around in the tight space he had been put in what magician the one right behind you Poe slowly turned around jumping when he noticed some jump when he noticed one the same height as him looking straight at him with a straight face only to be turned into a bright smile. Hello, funny meeting you here, the man spoke. You, you're from the Decay of Angels. Yes, but I have a name. I'm not some mere Decay of Angels member. Then what's your name? Then what's your name? Pop quiz time. It's Nikolai. Grumble, um, Grumpo mumbled, chewing on Pocky. How did you know? I've never even told you. The so-called magician muttered out in surprise. I'm pretty smart, you know. That be true. I haven't said a w- I haven't said a word, and he knows the murder in e- the murder on every novel I make. I'd say he makes a good detective, but his response, Poe said solemnly, looking over to Rumpo, I'm going to be a candy sealer. Rumpo cheered, throwing his hands up, only for them to slam against the ceiling. Ow! He winced. Ultimate candy seal, you say? A voice appeared dramatically, appearing from the background, suddenly with a pose, with a pose that, with a pose was, with a pose was a man, with a sli- with slick back hair and a suit on. Tis I, Mushigawa Yuguri, Yuguri, who will be your partner in crime. The man spoke, holding out his hand to the glass as if expecting the other to take it. 
Ugh, you. Nikolai muttered, shunning the other. What? Don't tell me you're so jealous because I knew Theodore before you. How dare you use his first name? I can use his first name. I've known him for way more years than you have. Well, I'm closer to him than you. Oh, really? Have you kissed yet? Well, Nikolai tapped on the tip of his finger on his bottom lip. Wait, what? Mishitaro spat ter- petrified. Let's quickly get you out of here. Let's get you out of here quickly, Poe said, opening the glass door to the crane game. We can, can we watch movies and stacks when we get home? Sure. Yay. Y- you guys have done what? Mushitaro yelled, shivering for minutes to come. To be continued. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Sorry, the audio was a bit all over the place. I was trying to readjust my feet because my feet kept going numb. I have to figure that out sometime soon. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. And I want to thank you again for getting so close to 1,000 subscribers. Ow, my legs doing the leg cramp thing again. Okay, leg cramp, go on. Okay, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye. Take care of yourself.